Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, everybody. Anybody know that the Lord has done great things for you? If you know that God has been good to you, uh, you ought to testify and, and tell somebody that the Lord has been good to you. You ought to give God some thanks today on this great day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so happy that you're able to join us this morning, my brothers and sisters, on JMBC Live. I see you out there coming in, still coming in. We thank you. We thank you for joining us. Invite somebody to come and share uh, in, the, in our worship experience on today. Tag somebody. Uh, create a, a, a watch room, uh, uh, whatever you have to do to get someone to come out and join us today on this day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are to rejoice and be glad in it. So I'm glad that you are with us today on JMBC Live. Uh, we thank you for your presence today. Uh, we want to, we want to invite you to to just uh, worship with us, praise God with us. Don't just sit back and watch like it's a TV show. But come on, let's worship the Lord together in the beauty of holiness. Praise God, praise God, somebody. Now I want to share some things with you, and then the choir is going to come back and sing. Uh, but there are some things that we are in. We are on the last day of our Pray Twenty Eight initiative. Uh, we've gone the whole month of February in prayer three day, three days, uh, three times a day. Praying morning, noon, and night. I pray that you have uh, been consistent in your time in prayer and I hope that you will continue to add this on. Don't just do this for 28 days, but uh, incorporate this in your everyday uh, activity uh, and it will be a blessing. I'm sure it has been a blessing for those of you who, who has done this. Also, we are within our Lenten season. You know, we're leading up to Calvary, uh, which Easter is coming up in a month now. So we just Pray that you are, again, doing some things, giving uh, some time to God, sacrificing some of your time, spending more time with him, uh, and getting closer and closer to him uh, because, God, because of his sacrifice. This is a great time for the believer because uh, we, get to, we, we, we get to remember. We remember him all year long, but this is just an amplified time of sharing our time with him. So I pray that you are doing that. Uh, make sure that you connect with us on Facebook. We are on Facebook right now, but we can also connect on our uh, YouTube channel. This, this broadcast will be uh, uh, is being recorded right now to be later uh, broadcasted again on our YouTube channel. So we thank you uh, for those. You can share that with anybody at, at, the, at the conclusion of this service. Also, uh, you can look at our website, www. Uh, dot jmbc uh, milo dot com and there you'll find all things jmbc uh, you'll find also these recordings you'll find our activities and events you'll find uh, information about how to give also out there uh, you those of you who are giving uh, through using our givelify app you can do that uh, also today there'll be deacons at the church after the service at from 12 o'clock to one o'clock there'll be some deacons at the church if you want to drive by the church and give them your uh, hand deliver your your gifts you can do that also today hi ah, now we got all of that out the way i just want to uh, get that uh, to you today and bless you also know that on wednesday night we'll be coming to you again with the wednesday night message hopefully you've been uh, coming out being a part we've been blessed it's been a blessing to come out on Wednesday night and share uh, just a, a, a brief meditation with you. So come out and join us on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock on, on uh, my page, on, on Greg Newhouse page. So you'll find it there, not on the church's page, but you'll find it on my page, on Greg Newhouse. So come out and share with us. Also, ladies, if you uh, haven't, haven't done so already, the women's uh, Sunday school class is in session and they are meeting every Sunday at 930 in the morning on Zoom. There is some con there's a the connect information that's on the JMBC Facebook page where you can connect to their Sunday school class at 930 every Sunday morning. I encourage you to come out. They had a great lesson today. Amen. 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 So let's go on into this worship time. But choirs want to come give us another selection. And then after that selection, we'll come back and we'll get into the word of God uh, today. God bless you. We'll see you in a minute.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you know that God is your way maker, you ought to give him a hand clap of praise right there. Someone should just give God some praise for him being a way maker. I don't know about you, uh, but I'm so glad that he makes a way out of no way for me. He makes a way out of no way for you. That's just who he is. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise right there. If you know that he's been good to you, he's kept you uh, through danger seen and unseen. He's protected you from storms. He's protected you from the enemy. He's just a way maker. Uh, and he's always uh, moving in our midst. Someone praise God right now for the way maker for him making a way for us on this day and on every day of our lives. Now, we're getting into the word message today, but I didn't mention, but we will be having Lord's Supper after this. So make sure that you get your Lord's Supper, get your cup, get your, your bread together so that we can partake together. Let's pray. Father God, I just want to say thank you. Yes, Lord, thank you for being a way maker. A miracle worker, a promise keeper, Lord, a light in the darkness. Father, that's just who you are. I thank you, Lord, because you are moving in our midst. You are changing lives, Father. You're, Father, you're turning things around, Father. 
God, we can worship you, Father, not uh, because you are, because you, uh, of what you do, God. We just, we worship you, God, just because of who you are. So, God, we come today, Lord, just to hear from you, God. We pray that you would speak, God. Uh, make it clear to us. May, may we be able to hear your voice clearly. God, I ask your blessings on the one who may be listening or watching this on today. On this February 28th, God, the last day of February, God, I pray, God, that your word would resonate with somebody today. That it may help them, Father, make life changes, God. That they that their life, Lord, would be, that they would draw closer to you, God, in their walk and with their uh, the way they uh, act, God, in their lives, Father. I thank you, God, for your word that's lit, that is alive and in us, Father. So, Father, send it, Father, even right now. I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, uh, our Lord and Savior, who died for our sins, God, but ascended to heaven, Lord, on the uh, and on the third day. He got up from the grave, Lord, and he ascended to heaven, God, and he's right now with you, sitting at your right hand. And I thank you, God, for that authority that comes from his position, God, that we can draw down upon. So, God, I thank you, God, and I pray, God, that whatever someone may be going through in their lives right now, that they'll find, God, their strength, God, in Jesus Christ. God, let them know, Father, that even if they're low or if they're high, God, they can do all things through Jesus Christ who gives them the strength. So we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Holy Spirit, speak to us even right now. Bless us with your presence, God. Open up our ears to hear the Spirit today and what he has to share with us, the church of God, Father. I do ask for preaching boldness, clarity, and power to declare your holy and righteous word. God, calm my nerves, God. And Father, give me strength, God, that I may be able to articulate your word on today. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray and give thanks. Amen. And amen. Someone say amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You may be wondering, we're going to get into the word, but you may be wondering why Pastor G has on overalls today. Uh, well, at Jehovah, today is the fourth Sunday of February, which would normally be our annual men's day. Uh, we would be celebrating. We would have had a prayer breakfast on yesterday. And today we would have uh, climaxed it with the worship among men. Uh, but of course, uh, we're not gathering in the at the church uh, because of the COVID-19 situation, but we would usually be dressed like this today in our overalls, celebrating Men's Day today. So that's why uh, Pastor has on his overalls today. Um, uh, we are Jehovah, and we love to do things. We love to celebrate. We love the fellowship. We are the country church worth what? The country drive. So come on, let's get into this word. I got a lot I want to share with you today. A lot I got to get to today. Uh, we're still dealing with this series, the battle. Uh, we're almost coming to the end of this thing. We're, gonna, we're starting to uh, uh, climax this thing. And now we're going to finally be talking about strongholds and tearing down strongholds. Specifically today, I want to share with you a message on tearing down strongholds in your personal life. Uh, there are some areas in our lives that we need to tear down strongholds. And the first thing is going to be, uh, we're going to share is we need to tear those strongholds down that are in our personal life. We have to deal with ourselves first before we can branch out to something else. Amen. So we're going to do with that. We're going to do, deal with that today. And I got some scriptures, a lot of scriptures that you're going to have to follow along uh, as we go through this. Uh, there's not a particular text, but we're, uh, most of this is uh, coming out of James. We got a little uh, scripture that's coming out of, uh, uh, of Colossians and other places, but I want you to follow along in here because we're going to be talking about this thing of tackling these strongholds in our personal lives. Amen. And so we now we've covered a lot of ground and we've studied a lot of scripture uh, during this sermon series, all of it on our way to get to this point in this sermon series. All of it is, bring, is leading us here. Uh, to where we are right now. Now, uh, and now that we've done all of this in an attempt to understand uh, spiritual warfare, we are now ready to take up uh, some weapons that God has given us and start tearing down the gates of hell. And so we're going to start attacking and tearing down the strongholds that Satan has set up against us in our personal lives. Someone say in our personal lives. Uh, so let's start today by first again by defining what a sa uh, what a satanic stronghold is. Uh, a stronghold, my brothers and sisters, uh, is a mindset that accepts a situation as unchangeable, uh, even though that situation is contrary to the will of God. Uh, 
Let me say that again. A stronghold. A stronghold is a mindset uh, that accepts a situation as unchangeable, even though that situation is contrary. It is against what the will of God is for your life. And so listen, uh, I think that it is safe to say that many people in the body of Christ are in bondage to satanic strongholds. Uh, they have given up ground to Satan in their lives, and he has used that ground to build a base from which he wages war. He has, he has built a base to where he shoots his fiery darts, and he's making that person a prisoner of war. Uh, yes, strongholds. Strongholds are like fortresses. Uh, once they get built, they are difficult to attack and to take out. And some of those who have Satan strongholds in their lives have tried everything they could to escape, uh, but nothing has worked. Uh, some strongholds, they're, uh, they're pretty obvious. And then, uh, you know, like drug addiction. Uh, uh, but then there are some other strongholds that are not so obvious, like uh, uh, illicit thoughts, bad thoughts, and, or anger and bitterness and forgiveness. And it's, in, it's, in, it's unfortunate, my brothers and sisters, that Christians, that we allow the devil to build his strongholds in our lives. It's, it's even more unfortunate that when they come, when we come to believe that this is the way that uh, we are to live, that we are doomed to live this way the rest of our lives. And you know what? Some of us, we like to blame stuff on other people for our strongholds. Uh, can I get a witness right there? Ah, but listen here, my people, listen. Uh, people cannot cause you to surrender ground to Satan. Uh, yeah, people do, do not cannot push you uh, to surrender ground to Satan. They now they may have some influence on you, but listen, the strongholds get built when we fail to deal with sin and the devil in our own lives. Amen, somebody. And so, listen, my brothers and sisters, strongholds are ultimately spiritual problems. So until we attack them with our spiritual weapons, our spiritual armor, then they will not be torn down. Look what 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4 says right here. It says that for the weapons of our warfare are not uh, of the flesh, uh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. And then Jesus says this in John 3 and 6, he says, that which is born of the flesh and that which is born, what the, that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Listen, too often we fight problems of the spirit uh, with weapons of the flesh. And so listen, today my text today is going to be to try to help you tear down strongholds in your personal lives or at least uh, to get you to be able to help someone else, a brother or a sister, to do the same in their lives. And so there are four R's I want to share with you today. Four R's that I'm going to share with you today as we look at tearing down these strongholds in our personal lives. The first R that I want to share, the first thing that we must do if we're going to see spiritual breakthrough, if we're going to see these spiritual strongholds fall, the first thing we have to do is, number one, remember your position in Christ. Remember your position in Christ. Now listen, we have already established that as believers we have an exalted position, yes, According to Ephesians 2 and 6, we have been raised with Christ and seated with him in the heavenly places. We have the consequence of that position that's found in Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Uh, the consequence says this, that if you have been then raised, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above. There it is. Not on the things that are on earth. Listen, that means that if your mind is set on an earthly solution to your spiritual problems, to your spiritual struggles, then listen, you're not going to see heaven, a heavenly response. Uh, the solution to strongholds that Satan builds in your life is found in Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness right there? Look what Colossians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10 says. It says this, it says, for in him all the fullness of, the, of deity dwells in bodily form. And in him you have been made complete. And he is the head 
over all rule and authority. Ah, yes. So Christ, my brothers and sisters, has all the spiritual authority that you will ever need. Uh, yes, because why? He is in charge. He's in charge of the universe. He has already beaten Satan and he's already made him a public spectacle. He's already embarrassed him. Therefore, now listen, if you're going to beat the evil one, if you're going to be Satan, then you're going to need to be connected to Jesus, the one who has won the victory over Satan. Tell somebody, text right there, put a comment right there on Facebook. Tell somebody to stay connected to Jesus. My brothers and sisters, it's only when we are connected, when we stay connected, can we defeat the enemy and have victory over Satan? Come on, give God a hand clap right there. But then your exalted position in Christ, look at this, your, your exalted position in Christ, uh, it not only gives you this connection, this vital connection to him, but it also gives you legal authority over Satan that when he attacks you, you can let him know that he no longer has any rights in your life. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, that's, that's shouting news right there. Uh, you see this, I believe that there's a lot of believers out there who are under attack right now that don't know their true, their, their true position in in Christ. Uh, yeah, they don't realize that all of his attacks are unauthorized attempts by him to put them under his power. Uh, when the reality is he has no rights, he has no claims in your life because you have been legally set free by Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, somebody. And so listen, just knowing that much about your position packs so much power for you in your life because listen, Satan does not want you to understand the legal authority that you have in Christ. Uh, he wants you to forget who you are because he knows that then you will never exercise your legal spiritual rights bestowed to you by God. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So listen, my brothers and sisters, once, once you understand your position in Christ, uh, when the enemy starts bringing up your past and telling you that you can't overcome your past, uh, you got the legal rights to put him in his place and send him packing and running. Ah, yeah, the rights that we have in Jesus Christ gives us more power, someone say more power, than what Satan has over your life. So listen, remember this, and then use your position in Christ, because you are seated, the Bible says, you are seated with him in heaven. You have the right. Uh, you have rights against Satan. He has to fall back before the authority that comes from Jesus Christ, and you have that in you. Come on, somebody, give God some, some praise right there. Amen. 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 But then secondly, secondly, the second com component, uh, the second R in this process of tearing down personal strongholds is you must rely on God's provision. Rely on God's provision. Look at James 4 and 6. Look what the Apostle James right here in, in 4 and 6. He says this, God gives greater grace. Someone say greater grace. Therefore, it says, God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Ah, greater grace, greater grace. Someone put that out there, greater grace, greater grace. What, what is this greater grace uh, that Paul, that James is talking about? Uh, uh, James, James, he's, he's not talking here about uh, your salvation, the grace that comes from salvation. But he's talking about the grace that we need in order to live a victorious life, uh, life as believers. Yes, uh, James, James, he's talking about the grace uh, that is greater than the mess that you might be in right now. Uh, yeah, 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 it don't matter how big the mess is or how, uh, uh, what you've been through in your life. Listen, the grace that is available to you, to you in Jesus Christ is much bigger than your mess. Uh, yes, I'm getting happy right there. Uh, in other words, in other words, God's grace, his grace gives you, uh, uh, the grace that he gives you, he gives it to you so you can tear down those personal strongholds. Uh, his grace is far greater than the power that's keeping those strongholds in place. Uh, and so what James is saying to us here is that even when you add up all of the years of your mess, uh, God still gives greater grace. Ah, uh, yes, somebody. Uh, God, he has an inexhaustible supply of grace to overcome whatever junk that
that you have accumulated in your life. Uh, yeah, you see, a lot of us have accumulated more junk than we can even that we can ever remember. Can I get a witness right there? Uh, but you take all of that junk that you can remember, take all of that mess, and then you add it to all of the junk that you forgot. And I let you know today that God still has greater grace that is more than all of your sins put together. Ah, uh, that's shouting news right there, my brothers and sisters. Listen, and so there's no there's no reason if He gives us this greater grace, then there's no reason to leave satanic strongholds standing in your life. Ah, uh, especially when God has given you the provision of grace, to, and then we can tear them down because He has given us greater grace. Somebody just shout greater grace right there. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So Pastor G, Pastor G, listen, if all of this grace is available, then how in the world? Do we get it? And I'm glad you asked that question. That's a good question because James, he outlines the answer for us in that verse seven. When he, when he begins that verse seven, he says, listen, submit therefore to God. Look at that James. He says, submit therefore to God. So listen, what does submission to God look like? And that's another good question. Uh, and a good way to answer that is to know this, then what submission does not look like. Yeah, let's answer it by, by saying, what does submission not look like? So listen, if your life uh, is marked by things like strife and lust and envying or illicit pleasure, friendship with the world, then that's a good sign that you're not submitted to God. Are you hearing me? Because listen, submission uh, is usually presented as the process of making a commitment to Christ. And that's important because, listen, you can make a commitment to the Lord without really surrendering your will to him. Uh, you missed that. You just missed that. Let me say that again. I said you can make a commitment to the Lord without really surrendering your will to him. Yes, yes. In other words, uh, uh, before you could submit to him, then you have to first surrender to him. Amen. Submission comes before you can surrender. Here's what I mean here. Uh, someone, listen, someone who's been struggling with a stronghold can say, listen, I've, listen, I made a commitment to the Lord and I'm going to stop doing what I've been doing. How many of you have said that before? I'm going to stop right now. I made this commitment to God and I'm going to stop doing what I've been doing. And that sounds good. Amen. It sounds good. But listen, many people who make that kind of commitment go they get out and they they quickly fall flat on their faces why because listen commitment does not work unless it is preceded by surrender uh yes listen a, a commitment may simply be another way of saying that listen i'm going to i'm going to do this all by myself i'm going to i'm going to beat this problem i i promised god that i was going to do it and i'm i'm going to do it but listen we already know that that kind of commitment uh, uh we can't beat that we can't beat Satan on our own commitment. Come on, somebody. Uh, so while commitment often says I can surrender, uh, 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 I can, or I can do this, uh, surrender always tells us that, Lord, listen, I can't do this in my power. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Commitment says, listen, I can do this. I know I can do this, but surrender says, listen, I'm too weak. Lord, I'm too weak. I cannot live up to your standards in my own strength. Uh, because listen, you see, listen, when you surrender to God, you say, I quit. Uh, yeah, a lot of us just need to throw our hands up right now and say, Lord, I quit. I've been trying to do this thing all by myself. I, I quit. I, I've tried. I've, I've tried to make New Year's resolution, resolutions. I've already uh, failed and bombed in that. Lord, I quit. That's what surrender is. Lord, it just says, I quit. I can't, I can't fight any longer. Listen. And so listen, if you want greater grace, my brothers and sisters, if you want that from God, then you have to surrender yourself. You have to surrender your own effort in order to win the battle and tear down some of these strongholds. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's, that's, that right there is a different kind of surrender because you are now surrendering to your commander in chief. Uh, you're surrendering to God rather than to the enemy. All uh, right. So when it comes to what Jesus Christ can empower us to do, uh, then listen, there's no reason to say that we cannot do something but uh, because Christ's power, uh, his power, it does not kick in until uh, we get out of our 
delusions of self-power. And that comes, my brothers and sisters, through surrender. It comes through surrender. You have to surrender. Amen, somebody. And so James, listen, he continues in this instruction in verse 8. He says, in verse 8, he says, come close to God. He will come close to you. James, uh, amen, amen. In that verse 8, he says, come close to God. Draw near to God. Some of yours might say, he will draw near to you. So how, how, how do we come close to God? How do we come close to God? Uh, we come close to him or we draw near to him uh, when we enter his presence uh, and we spend time with him in prayer and in worship uh, before him. Listen, my brothers and sisters, this is this is critical because, listen, uh, if the only time that you worship and praise God is on Sunday morning, then listen, you're not drawing near to him. You're not getting close to him. You're just visiting him every week. Hey, man, you just got some visiting hours. You're just visiting him. You're not going close, drawing close to him. And let me tell you something wonderful that happens when you draw close to God, when you draw near to God uh, in praise and in worship and in prayer. Listen, when you do that, it gives the devil fits. Uh, yeah, because why? He Listen, the devil is allergic to praise. He's allergic to prayer. He's allergic to worship of God. God. And when that air, when you fill the air with uh, with prayer and with praise, it, it chokes Satan up and it makes it hard for him to function in that type of environment. Uh, when your prayer starts to fill the air, listen, Satan can't hang around that stuff because uh, the environment is too uncomfortable for him. He can't handle it when you draw near to God. He can't function when you turn your Sunday morning worship into a way of life. Uh, when you don't worship him just on Sunday, but you worship him on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. He can't function in that type of environment and he has to leave the premises because he's allergic to praise. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, listen, God, uh, listen, listen, Satan, listen, he should, start, he should start sneezing and coughing every time he gets close to you. He should start choking up every time he gets near to you because you have set the atmosphere with praise and worship and prayer and he cannot stand to be in that type of presence. Uh, that's why you have to make sure that you, you, you fill your life with praise, with worship. You got to fill your life with prayer, being close to God. Because once you draw close to God, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He has to leave you alone. He can't stand that atmosphere. Come on, somebody. Uh, give God a hand clap of praise right there. Amen. 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 Let's move on. Let's move on. Listen, along with remembering our position, along with relying on God's provision. To tear down these strongholds, uh, it also involves us repenting of our sins. We have to repent of sin. Someone say repent of sin. Now listen, the Apostle James in chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, listen to what he goes on. He continues to say this. He says, cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be miserable and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Listen, James, he couldn't have been much clearer uh, about our need to call sin what it is and then deal with it. Amen. James was just saying, listen, you need to recognize sin, call sin what it is. Call it sin. Come on, somebody. Uh, listen, the reason why God can't help some of us is that we never sin. Amen, somebody. We just make mistakes. Amen. But listen, this, uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus didn't die for our mistakes. Come on, somebody. The Bible says that he died for our sins. Amen, somebody. And so admitting our sin simply means that we're taking responsibility for it. We're, uh, you, can't, you can't pass the buck when it comes to your sin. We, and we live in that kind of a society where everyone wants to blame somebody else for the, black, for the bad stuff that happens in their lives. But what somebody did to you, listen, way back then, it does not excuse, for, it does not excuse you for the wrong that you're doing right now. Uh, you can't be blaming uh, your people, the people in your past, what they did to you for your sin that you are doing right now. It takes humility to admit to your sin. Uh, but when you humble yourself in the way that James is telling us, then you get God's greater grace. Amen, somebody. Uh, because listen, the opposite of humility is pride. 
Ah, uh, and in that sixth verse of James chapter four, it says that God is opposed to the proud. Uh, he, he opposes to the proud. That, so instead of getting God's greater grace, the proud person gets nothing from God. He gets the hand from God. Why? Why is this? Because listen, uh, when you and I are too proud to come to God and to admit to him that we are messed up, that, uh, that we've sinned. Listen, you know what we do? We remind him of Satan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we when we're too proud to submit to him, uh, uh, we're, we're, we remind him of that angel who said, "Listen, I'm tired of submitting to God. Uh, I'm tired of humbling myself before God. I, listen, I want to do this God thing all by myself. I, I want creation to start bowing to me. And listen, my brothers and sisters, that's who you remind God of when you can't admit that you are a sinner. Uh, somebody, you remind him of that angel called Satan, of that angel called Lucifer. Listen, and you can't be proud." and come to God seeking his greater grace. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, Pastor G? Why? Because, listen, uh, when you come to him needing grace, listen, you ain't got nothing to brag about. Uh, when you come to God needing his mercy and his grace, you can't be talking about uh, who you are and what you've done because, listen, your pride don't mix with humility. It just don't mix. God hates pride. Uh, and you're proud when you refuse to come to him and call sin what it is. Uh, Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So you got to repent of your sin if the strongholds in your life are going to fall. Somebody say repent of sin. Repent, repent, repent. Don't act like Satan and hold on and think, you're, oh, I'm just making mistakes. No, call sin, sin in your life. Deal with it and give it to God and allow him to change and deal with the enemy for you. Come on, somebody, because I don't know about you. I need the grace. I'm not perfect. Amen. I don't do things perfectly. I got to confess every single day. Lord, forgive me of my sins, and then I thank Him for forgiving me of my sin. I sin, and I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say it because I want the Lord to fight my battles. I need His greater grace in my life. And if you needed somebody on to give God a hand clap of praise, a shout of hallelujah right there, and say thank you for your grace. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This last point, I got to save the last one on purpose. Uh, it's already been stated ahead on verse 7, uh, but this last R that I want to share with you appears in James 4, Ch uh, verse 7, it says, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Uh, and so the last thing that I want to tell you is that this, and that last R is resist the devil, resist the devil. And, you know, we've talked about resisting the devil before in previous sermons. But listen, I want you to see it in the context of, of tearing down strongholds in your personal life. The important, the important thing here is uh, that the order in which James, he puts this thing. And notice when he says this in verse 7, notice that he says first to submit yourself to God. Submitting yourself to God must come first before you can resist the devil. Uh, if you missed that, come on somebody. You can't just go out there and just start trying to resist the devil and you haven't submitted to God. Hello somebody. Now you want to know why you pray to God to take some things out of your life, stop the enemy from attacking you, and then you come, you wake up and get up the next day and, and the devil is just as stronger as he was yesterday? It's because your prayers are in vain because you have not submitted to God first. Amen. Once you submit to God, then you can resist Resist the devil. He says the same thing with Peter. Peter, he says the same thing in 1 Peter 5 and 6. Look what, he, what Peter says. He says, listen, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time. Listen, humble yourselves. You got to humble yourself. You got to submit to God under his hand, under the hand of God. Come under his authority so that he can exalt you at the right time. Listen, this is the difference between you trying to take out those strongholds in your own power, in your own strength, and surrendering to God so that he can give you the power to do it. And I don't know about you. Listen, I need his power. My power is weak. Come on, somebody. I can't do it. I can't mess with Satan. Satan 
and stronger than me. He's, he's smarter than me. And so if I'm going to tear down some strongholds, I need God's power. I need to surrender my strength and I need to operate on God's strength because he can empower me to do it. Because when God exalts you, when he raises you up, listen, you can rise above any problem in your life. You can rise above addiction. You can rise above attachment uh, to the wrong people. You can rise above broken uh, relationships and marriages. You can, you can rise against anything else that's holding you captive. Can I get an amen right there? Somebody just shout amen. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So listen, uh, yeah, yeah. You may be saying, listen, Pastor Gene, listen, I know I got to resist it. I know I need to resist the devil. But how in the world do I do this? And I, I'm glad you asked that question. You're asking some good questions today, church. Listen, we've shared that answer time and time again. In every message, almost, we've shared the solution to this. Listen, the only way, the only way that you will be able to resist Satan is by knowing and using the word of God. Ah, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to say it, but I have to tell you again, it's the word of God. Uh, that's your answer to Satan's lies in your lives. Uh, uh, it's the word of God. Uh, that's the answer when Satan says that you'll never change. Uh, when, when Satan says, listen, you can't help yourself. Uh, go ahead and do what you got to do. It's, it's Satan's lies that tells you, listen, just give in to all of that. You're going to be all right. Uh, and, you, uh, and, and, and it's when uh, you know the word of God that you, co you can combat the lies of Satan. And listen, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not in the dark knowing what it looks like, uh, what, what successful resistance to the, to Satan looks like. Now we've seen it before. We've talked about it before because we, uh, we got that example in Jesus Christ. Uh, when Jesus was tempted over in Matthew four, uh, he was tempted by the devil, the devil. And you know, the story Satan said to Jesus, listen, just, I know you're hungry out there. I know you've been out here for a while. You're hungry. Go ahead. Make yourself some bread and get yourself something to eat. And the Bible says that Jesus answered, it is written, man uh, shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Uh, and then Satan went on and he told Jesus, well, we'll just go ahead and jump. He said, listen, uh, the angels, they're, they're going to catch you. Uh, just jump. And so Jesus responded. And he's, he said, no, on the other hand, he said, it is written, uh, you should should not put the Lord your God to the test. Ah, and then Satan went on and he showed Jesus all of the kingdoms. Uh, uh, you read this before. He showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, listen, you can have all of this. I'll give you all of this. All you got to do is just bow down to me. But then Jesus answered and said, listen, get out of here, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Get out of here and go for it's written. Uh, you shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Uh, and the Bible says that after Jesus used the word of God on Satan, uh, Satan had to leave. Listen, my brothers and sisters, I can guarantee you, listen, that nothing that you would ever face, nothing that me that I would ever face will ever compare with the, with the temptations that Jesus faced. Uh, but when you resist the devil with the word of God, listen, he has to leave you alone. Let me just stop and ask this question right there. Does anybody want the devil to leave them alone? Uh, are you tired of the devil wreaking havoc in your life? Uh, are you tired of the devil getting victory, getting, uh, uh, giving, getting taken ground from your marriage, from your family, from your kids, from your job, your career? Are you tired of the devil um, uh, messing up your life? Then you better get the word of God and you better start attacking him with God's word because his word is powerful and it's powerful enough to get Satan out of your life. He has to run when he sees the word of God, when he hears the word of God. Uh, so that's when, uh, so whenever he tells you, listen, that you, you're you never going to change, listen, you can combat him with the word and say, listen, now nah, you're wrong, Satan. I am, I'm a new creation in Jesus Christ. Christ. Uh, I've been raised with Jesus Christ. I'm, I'm setting my mind on things above and not on things that are below. Uh, and the next time that he tells you that, you're never going to be free from that addiction. You can't change. Uh, you need to tell Satan, nah, you a liar, Satan. You just a liar because God says that anyone whom Jesus has set free, ah, you're getting happy right there, is free indeed. Uh, and the truth of the word will set me free. Listen, and when you give him the word, this is Satan has to leave you alone because he cannot stand up to the word. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise right there for his word. 
Ah, yes, 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 yes. Listen, as I come to a close, I'm getting close to a close here. Well, listen, if we have all of this authority, we got all of this authority and we have all of this power that we need to defeat Satan and tear down the strongholds that he's built in our lives, then why, why don't more of us believers put God's word to the test more often? Uh, what, what are we waiting for, church? Uh, uh, listen, I, I know one person, and I'm going ahead and get out of here, but I know one person who put the word to the test. Uh, other than Jesus Christ, listen, his name was David. Uh, can I call a witness before I go home? Come on, somebody. Before I let you go, let me call one witness. Come here, David. Come here, David, 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 David. He had, he had an enemy that was much bigger than he was. His name was Goliath, the Goliath, uh, the Philistine giant. He had, he had everybody scared. He had Israel scared. He had the king scared. Uh, the whole Israelite army was scared. Uh, but David, he, David, he wasn't scared. He was indignant, the Bible says, because this, this giant, this Philistine giant was defying the armies of the living God. So David, listen, he volunteered to go fight Goliath and Saul. Saul said, oh, hey, I'm going to let you go. Listen, he tried to give David some of his armor, but it didn't, weigh, it didn't, it didn't fit him. It weighed him down. Uh, and so David said, I don't need that. Listen, I'm going to use my own armor. I got my own spiritual armor. And said, That's all I'm, I need right now. And God, listen, God, uh, he had already empowered David to kill a lion, uh, to kill a bear. Uh, and so he just knew that this nine-foot pagan was not going to be a problem for him and his God. And so David said, listen, Listen, he said, because I've seen God work on yesterday. I, I'm not afraid of what I might face today. Oh, come on, somebody. That's shouting news right there. Has anybody out there seen God work in their lives? Do you know what he's done for you in the past? Has anybody seen God make a way on yesterday? Uh, you can say, listen, I've seen how he worked on yesterday. Uh, I've seen how he brought me out on yesterday. I've seen how he's delivered me on yesterday. I've seen how he healed my body on yesterday yesterday so I'm not afraid of what today holds because if he did it back then oh come on somebody I, I know he can do it again but listen David he looked at uh, Goliath he looked at David and laughed at him he taunted him and uh, uh, David and said listen David said listen but I got an answer right here for you Goliath David said this to Goliath over in uh in first Samuel uh 45 and 46 chapter 17 he said listen you come to me with a sword you come to me with a spear uh, and a saber, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of the armies, uh, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. Uh, this day, he said that the Lord will hand you in. He will hand you over to me. He's going to deliver you unto me. Uh, and then you know the story. David went on and he proceeded to kill Goliath and cut off his head. My brothers and sisters, what am I trying to say here? Uh, listen, I don't know. I don't know who your Goliath is. I don't know what your Goliath is. But listen, there's nothing stopping you from tearing it down. There's nothing stopping you from knocking him down. Listen, because we have the word of God and we have a high priest, Jesus Christ, whom the Bible says uh, faced every temptation that you and I would ever face. And we can go to him. We can go to him and draw from that source anytime we need to. Ah, uh, yes, yes. God's word says that you are a new person in Jesus Christ. It says that you are free indeed if Jesus Christ has made you free. So listen, my brothers and sisters, it's time to claim your new identity identity in Jesus Christ and then act like it. Don't just claim it. Uh, don't just claim to be a follower of Jesus Christ. But, but now it's time for us to act like it. It's, it's time for us to draw down on that inexhaustible supply uh, provision that he has given us. It's, it's time for us to deal with that sin that keeps on tripping us up. It's time for us to deal with that sin that keeps those strongholds in our lives propped up. And it's time for us to send Satan packing. Uh, can I get a witness in here? Is there anybody want to send Satan packing? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. We have to do it in the power of Jesus Christ and to claim our authority as sons and daughters of the most high God. Uh, and will we struggle? Will we still have some struggles in life? Yes. Of course, we're going to have some struggles in life. Yes, we're going to have battles as long as we are still alive in this flesh. Amen, somebody. But listen, we have every weapon that we need to defeat Satan at our disposal. So listen, 
Let's go out. Let's go out. Let's go out this week and let's take up our weapons and let's use them and let's go out and let's go meet these giants that are in our lives. Let's go tear down some of these strongholds that the enemy has propped up against us. Because, listen, God is waiting to knock them down for us. Uh, he's waiting. He's waiting. And he will confront the devil for us in Jesus name. Someone just say in Jesus name. Uh, yes. In Jesus name. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying for my brother and sister right now. Lord, they may have a stronghold, God, that they can't even recognize. They don't recognize God. But I pray, God, that we will begin to recognize those things that we have allowed Satan to build in our lives. Lord, that you will begin to tear them down. Not us, God. We, can, we can't do it, God. We've tried. We've tried. But we commit unto you. We commit ourselves unto you, God. And we pray, God, that you would tear down those things as we surrender our lives to you, God. As we commit and surrender, God, unto you, God. We pray, God, that by your strength, that you would tear down these things in our lives, that we would get, that you would get the glory out of our lives, that we would begin to live like you have called us to live, like you have created us to live. God, that others may see your power and glory resting on us, God, and come to know your son, Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who has given us the victory. I thank you, God, who has given us every spiritual blessing in Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. Now, God, help us, God, to begin to tear down those personal strongholds. Help us to turn them down, God. God, thank you for your greater grace that outweighs everything in our lives. Thank you for your greater grace that over that overcomes, God, all of our Past mistakes and presence, God. Uh, thank you for your greater grace, God. No matter, God, what we can pull up or any junk that we can, that the devil tries to throw in our face, you still give us greater grace uh, that, that enables us, God, to get rid of those, those strongholds in our lives. And we just say thank you. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, God, for all that you've done for us. In the name of Jesus, God, we say hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. And amen. Someone just give God a hand clap of praise right there for the grace that he gives you to be able to tear down strongholds in your life. Those personal strongholds in your life. I don't know about you. Listen, my soul is happy when I think about what God has done for me and the grace that he's given me. Man, when you look at grace, that, that word grace, it accomplishes, it just covers so many things. It covers so many things for us. Amen. But one of those things is, listen, he gives us power to overcome all of these, all of these attacks that come upon our lives. Amen. Somebody. God bless you. God bless you. I hope you were blessed by that word. We're going to move into our Lord's Supper. I hope you have your cup and your bread. Get your cup and your bread together. We're going to partake in the Lord's Supper. I'm going to share the scripture that comes out of 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm going to give you a few moments if you hadn't had a chance. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds right now to go and to get those elements as we prepare our hearts for this sacred time. Let's do that. Hope you have had time to go and get get what you need in order to partake in this. We've been doing this, amen, for the whole month, of February, for the whole year so far we've been doing this. And I don't know about you, but listen, it's been a blessing to be able to do this and to remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, of course. Uh, there's no set times when you can do this. You can do this anytime you want, amen. A believer in Jesus Christ, you can do this whenever you want, whenever your heart's desire to commune, to get closer. It brings us closer to God when we remember his sacrifice. And so we've been doing it, amen, all year so far. Every Sunday we've been, we've been getting our cups, we've been grabbing our bread, we've been 
remembering the, the awesome sacrifice of Jesus Christ. If you have your bread and cup, let me read to you what 1 Corinthians chapter 11 says. It says this, it says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So my brothers and sisters, you have your cup, you have, we're gonna bless it. Before we bless it, the Bible also gives us instructions to make sure that we examine ourselves before we eat the bread, before we drink the cup, because we don't want to eat and drink damnation, the Bible says. We want to properly recognize the body of Jesus Christ, the body that was broken, the body that shed his blood. So at this time, examine yourself before we take together. Father, we love you only because you loved us first. And so, Father, we've come to remember the sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ, the love that you showed in sending your only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, Father, would not perish, but they would have everlasting life. And so, God, we're thankful for what he did for us. And we ask your blessings on this bread. That represents his broken body. Father, bless the bread. God, we're thankful that he that his body was bruised uh, for our iniquity. We thank you, God, that it was broken, God, uh, so that we might be made whole. Thank you for his body, God. Thank you for his blood. We ask your blessings on the cup that represents his blood that was shed for us. God, we understand and we know, God, that his blood had to be shed. It had it had to be shed, God. We thank you for that sacrificial lamb that shed, it, that shed his blood for us. And we know, God, uh, without that shedding of blood, there would be no remission of sin. That blood established the new covenant with us, Lord. And we're so thankful for that, Lord, because now, God, those who believe in you, those uh, who believe in your son, Jesus Christ, and his awesome sacrifice in our lives, Lord. We are now sons and daughters. We're not no longer seen as unrighteous, but you call us the righteousness of God through your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for that. We thank you. We understand why we do what we do, Father. So your blessings be upon those who partake right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen and amen. Let us eat. Let us drink together. We thank you, Lord. We love you because you first loved us. My brothers and sisters, I want to say thank you again for joining us on Jehovah on JMBC Live. Again, we are the Country Church Worth the Country Drive. Uh, we are located at 6277 Jehovah Road in Milo, Oklahoma. If you ever find yourself in the area, please come out and let's worship when we get back into the church. Until then, please come and join us on JMBC Live every Sunday at 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll have, a, again, a, a short uh, word on Wednesday, coming this Wednesday at 7 p.m. We hope that you come join us on Wednesday night. Also, invite someone else to come out during our midweek worship. Amen. And I thank you for joining us today. I pray God's peace to be upon you. Uh, may, his, may his face shine on you. May he smile on you today. 
uh, and on the rest of this week. May he, may he protect you as Jehovah Nisi, uh, that his banner will be your protection today. May his joy uh, be your strength on this day. I pray that you'll be able to share the love of Christ with somebody else this week, uh, someone who you uh, didn't get a chance to share it with last week. I pray that those doors of opportunity will come your way, that you may be able to share Jesus Christ with somebody this week. I pray that you'll be able to love like you never loved before. And we'll do better this week than we did last week in being a Christian. I pray that for you on this week, and I ask his blessings to be abundant in your life. I pray that you begin, that he begins to tear down those strongholds in your life that's been holding you back. I pray, I pray, I pray those things in Jesus' name today. And I say it is done, it is so. Let it be done in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I love you. Have a great week. Uh, and, and, and come back and see us again next week. God bless you. You have been watching JMBC Live, where Reverend Gregory L. Newhouse is the pastor. We are located at 6277 Jehovah Road in Milo, Oklahoma. If you would like to contribute to the ministries of JMBC, please visit our online giving site at givelify.com, at jmbcmilo.com, or by mail at P.O. Box 1801, Ardmore, Oklahoma, 73402. Thank you for watching The Country Church Worth the Country Drive.